God's a good God. Yes, He is. And God wants you to give Him. God wants to, you to give Him holy of yourself. Holy. Not H O L Y, but W H O L L Y. English major, help me out on this. Which means I give Him my whole heart. Now listen, I'm going to tell you something. When God gets a hold of you and fills you with the Holy Ghost and you allow Him to work in your life, it may not be too fun for some of you because the Holy Ghost is going to start to speak to you and He's going to say, listen, you need to cut this out of your life. You need to cut that out of your life. You need to change this. You need to drop that habit. You need to start with this relationship. You need to change this. So you need to get married. <laughs> Some of you need to quit shacking up together. I'm telling you, when the Holy Ghost gets in the middle of the picture, you may not like what He has to say, but He's trying to straighten your life out. Amen. And if you don't listen to Him, you're living in sin. Amen. Oh, some of you going to be mad now. <laughs> you say, I come for a good time at Thanksgiving, preacher. Well, this is a good time. <laughs> Somebody says you never preach against sin. Tell us tune in. It's on the internet, the World Wide Web. We have fans around the world. I don't know if we'll have much anymore. <laughs> but you see, the Lord wants to pour a blessing in your life. But if you continue to walk in a sinful way and you're trying to, to worship the Lord on one hand and live in your sinful state in the other, you literally are, are at times just coming with the fruit of your hands and saying, Lord, look what I've done. Amen. And God says, I'm not going to respect it. God says, I'm not going to respect your offering because you haven't done it with a whole heart. You haven't done it with all of your heart. You say, preacher, I don't like you shouting at me. Well, listen, if you bust hell wide open, you'll be glad to ever hear it again, but it'll be too late then. Amen? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Oh, Lord, it got quiet, didn't it? Yeah. But folks, you cannot live in sin and please the Lord. I'm here to try to tell you, because take it from one who has tried it on both sides. And when the Holy Ghost gets a hold of you, He begins to work in your heart and change you. And you stop and you say, I'll only go so far that I'm not going to go any further. Guess what? You just cut the spigot of grace flowing in your life. You just turn the spigot down and you have hindered the work the Holy Spirit wants to do in you. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you something good here tonight. I'm telling you that if you're going to come to the Lord, you've got to come with a whole heart. You've got to come with a heart that says, Lord, I give it all to You. I completely give myself over to You. I'm not asking You to come to Bruce Weeks or, or to Mike or the Church of God or even the Jasper Prayer Meeting. I'm asking You to come to Jesus tonight with a repentant heart without sin in your life. And say, Lord, that's me. I mean, my goodness, you know how to make this thing right with God. If you're living in sin, fix it. Amen. Fix it. I mean, my goodness, if you need to get married, go get married. Uh, but fix it. I'll marry you right here. <laughs> I love these people. And it wasn't no shotgun with them because they had kids way on that yard. But I love them because 
You know what? They wanted to make this thing right with God. They said, Preacher, will you marry us? And they got up here one night and I told them a prayer meeting. I said, Guess what, folks? We're going to eat tonight, but we're going to have a wedding first. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. I hope it didn't embarrass you later, Faber. But I want to tell you. God wants your life to be right with Him. God wants to give you the very best He has for you. Don't come with some old gift of your own self-righteousness. Don't come with something that says, well, God, I think I did good enough on this realm. I think I made potato salad enough just to, to please you during this dinner. There's no way you're going to give that demonic stuff to the Lord and He'll ever be happy with it. Don't forget it. Come on. Come on. You, you, listen. When you... Jenny's back here going... But when you come to the Lord... When you come to the Lord, you've got to come with blood. The blood of the Lamb. Now I'm not talking about going out physically killing something. But you've got to come by faith. You've got to come by faith in your heart. Repentant. You know the Bible says that God honors a broken and a contrite spirit. Godly sorrow leadeth to repentance. I love each and every one of you. And I'm not trying to break the belt out and whip on anybody here. That's how much I love you. Because I want God to bless your life like you wouldn't believe. And I've seen it. I have seen it already. I have seen the Lord sweep through the middle of these people. And I've watched Him change your life. I really have. And, and He's going to keep on changing. And you're going to keep on coming. And you're going to keep on hearing me uh, hammer on things. And one of these days, it's going to click. You're going to say, you know what? He's right. And the only way I'm going to move forward is to surrender to the Lord and make it right. Folks, I'll tell you, we got some problems. I mean, there's sin in the camp. And when you got sin in the camp, it's hard for God to bless you. It's hard for God to move in your life and for you to be able to recognize it. I mean, my goodness, how many babies have we had born out of wedlock here at the Jasper, Georgia prayer meeting? I mean, I want you to think about that. God makes no mistakes. God makes no mistakes. It's like the young girl that that I was talking to here just a few weeks ago. That she was grown and and she was she was been uh, uh, been born out of wedlock. And she said, "My own mother doesn't want me, and my aunt has raised me." And she said, "But at times I feel like that." My life is useless in that that no one cares for me and, and, and no one wants me. And I said she said sometimes I think I'd be better off just to kill myself. And I said, listen, young lady, God loves you. And God don't make no mistakes. People do. Amen. I want you to think about that. I want you to think about that. We are fallible. We are broken. We are a, 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 a people that, that are driven by fleshly and carnal things. Our, our, our motives are messed up at times as we make the wrong choices and we, we pay for it the, the whole entire rest of our life. We pay for our sins. Oh, not paying for salvation, but we reap the repercussions of going out and disobeying God and living in sin and doing things that are displeasing to God and then all of a sudden come to church and say, well, I showed up in church. I feel an offering. Oh, praise the Lord. I'm right with God. No, it don't work like that. God says, I will spew you out of my mouth because you're neither hot nor you're cold. You're lukewarm. You're neither in one camp or out of the other. You're running over here saying, oh, I'm going to be 
religious on Sunday and Monday. I come over here and I sleep with everybody. I drink some beer. I smoke a little bit. I live like hell. And I somehow and I was getting ready for Sunday. So I run back over here. Oh, it's church time. Oh, I'm sorry, Lord. And then I'm back over here on my you dirty SOP. <laughs> Am I not telling the truth to you tonight? You see, people think preachers live in bubbles. I don't live in no bubble. I live in the real world. I got customers that come to me. I got a man that sends me all kinds of work. He's one of the third largest gun collectors. This side of Mississippi. And I've grown to love that man. I've had to grow to love him. Because I've never seen anybody could ever cuss like he cussed. He comes in my shop. And I swear, I think he plans it and makes it up before he gets there. I think if I tried, I couldn't put that many cuss words in one sentence. It's like his periods are extended in his sentences because of all the cuss words. You know what that just shows me? That just shows me a lack of intelligence. I can sure think of something better than to sit around cussing all the time. Amen. I think I can string more than two or three thoughts together without having to throw a cuss word out in the middle of it. Now, there's been a few times I've seen a few people get mad about some things and they've took off in a cussing spree and I can't say that I haven't enjoyed it. <laughs> because I can think of one person I read on Facebook this week that was extremely mad about a situation and she turned it loose, buddy. And I said, get him. Get him. I swear, one day. I wanted to like it, but I know it probably wouldn't look good for a preacher to like all them broken words she was spraying out. But I'm going to tell you something. It's sorry when a man won't take care of his young. Amen. You help bring them in the world? Guess what, Bubba? You might have five of them and you say, I can't afford the child support. Well, I tell you what, well, Miss Gladys over there one time had the best antidote for that. I don't even know where she's at. There she's walking back yonder. I was visiting her one day in the hospital. She won't mind me telling you this. I think it's funny when an 80-something-year-old woman's got more sense than a 15-year-old boy. She said, I tell you what, Bruce, she said, I've never seen such a mess of youngins in my life being born. She said, they just need to get that thing and just cut it off. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Gladys Fowler back here, you got to thank for that one. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Happy Thanksgiving, y'all! <laughs> you know, I say all that tongue-in-cheek, but folks, I'm going to tell you, it's a sad reality of the world that we live in. When we gloss over sin, and we think for some reason we can have respect before God. But I'm going to tell you, God's looking for your whole heart. God's looking for a repentant heart. I know there's people in here, me included, that's done things and made mistakes and should have done. But listen, you can make it right. You can make it right with God. You can come to the Lord and you can say, I'm going to fix this. I'm going to straighten this out. I'm going to be the mom I need to be. I'm going to be the daddy I should be. God's a good God. He yes, loves you. He is. Yes, he is. <laughs> Some of you may not never be back after tonight. You may say, I just don't like that preacher well. We love you. Thank you. 
You'll turn in the internet, I'm sure. What's he saying this week? God loves you. God wants you to have the very best in your, in your life. God wants to pour out a blessing on you. God wants to bless you in ways that He wants you to come with a whole heart. Folks, I'm going to tell you, we can eliminate a whole lot of our problems if we just look at our lives and see what's going on on the inside of our lives. You know, I thought about this today. Mike, I actually thought about doing my whole seminar on assets and liabilities after the first year. Somebody said, well, there he is. He's going to talk about money. I ain't talking about giving money to church. I'm talking about the way you spend money in your life and what you spend your money on and how that you kill the blessings of God in your life because you make the wrong kind of choices of the stuff that you spend your money on. Amen. Not quite did you see the Walmart. Huh? They took your seed to Walmart. Took your seed to Walmart. Took your seed down to the convenience store. Bought some lotto tickets. Bought some pill pills. Bought some five-hour energy. If anybody wants any five-hour energy, I can tell you where you can find some. <laughs> Top of my toolbox. Because every time I buy a set of tires from this motorcycle company, they must think that I'm going to need some five-hour energy because they send it to me. <laughs> I've never tried any of it and never will. But I got a bunch of it in the top of my toolbox. So if you ever want to change a tire with a set of tire irons manually, evidently that's the ticket to you being able to do it. <laughs> Have you ever thought about what keeps a convenient store in business? Yeah. You ever thought about that money that some of you working for, that money that some of you get a check once a month from the government, and that guy down there's convenience store, whether he's a Pakistani, Iranian, American, whatever he is, he says, "Come on in my store. I've got this cabinet over here that'll make body parts do what you." need them to do since they quit doing it a while back. I've got a cooler full I've got a cooler full of all kinds of alcoholic drinks here. Come on and get them. I've got a counter back here that's got every kind of cigarette. Oh, it gets me so aggravated because I'll go sometimes and somebody will say, "Well, I want the I want the Raleigh short, long filtered, menthol, low nicotine, high carb." They'll name it all, and some girl sitting back there going, "Where's that at?" I mean, there's twenty of one brand there, and she's looking for the ultra light, short filtered, low nicotine, anti tar. She's like, I don't think we got it. <laughs> and then there's the person with the lotto ticket. And they stand there. And they stand there. And they stand there. And they want a little bit of money. Give me a... Give me... Three twenty sixes. Four foot. No, no. On one of five. Christians. People from the church. And thank God is a crap shoot. Folks, there ain't no such thing as luck. I'm a firm believer in you make your own luck. I'm a firm believer, especially with a child of God, there is no luck. I told you last week that Kathy's daddy back there taught me one of the best things that I ever learned in all of my life. That preparation and opportunity equals luck. No such thing as luck. If you make yourself ready, if you will get yourself ready, the opportunity will present itself. God will send it to you. God created you 
to thrive. God created you to be blessed. God created you to prosper. But the problem is, is we live in our sin. We accept our sin. We gloss over our sin. We don't think too much about our sin. And we hinder the blessing that God wants to pour upon your life. God didn't say, hey, I created you and now I'm going to curse you. God created you in His likeness and in His image and He wants to bless our life. But you can't come with Cain's sacrifice. You've got to come with all your heart. You've got to surrender that heart to Him. Say whatever it is, Lord. Whatever it is, it's in my life. Quit giving it to the package standing down at the convenience store. Quit burning it up and throwing it away. Give it to the Lord. He's the best investor that you'll ever give to. He knows how to roll it over on your life. I, I told somebody this past week, you've heard me say it over and over, that every single time that I've ever went to a world missions conference, God has... Put it on my heart. Give it all. Give it all. Wouldn't give a little bit. Wouldn't give this, give that. God said, give it all. I'm like, God, how am I going to get home? He's like, don't worry about that. I'll get you there. I was telling somebody this week, I said, you know what? It's the most incredible thing that the Lord does in your life. If you will prepare yourself and you will give yourself wholly over to the Lord. The Lord will roll wave after wave after wave after wave of blessing upon you. Amen. I mean, you, you'll have so much of the blessing of the Lord rolling over on your life that you'll pray, God, stop. I can't handle it. Some of you shake your head like, I don't believe that. Believe me. Try it. Try him out. There's only 24 hours in a day. There's only so much you can do in a day. Try God out and see if He don't open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing upon you that you're going to have to go hire help just to enjoy it. Amen? You say, well, you, you're preaching a prosperity message. Yes, sir, but I'm preaching God's prosperity message, not man's. <laughs> Because John right over there, he said, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper even as thy soul prospers. So what does that tell me? That tells me that if I'm going to get the blessings of God in my life, I've got to get it right with the Lord. I've got to get my life right with the Lord. I've got to come in faith unto Him. I've got to look into that cross for my every need. I've got to go to Calvary. I've got to say, Lord, I trust You. I believe in You. I believe in You wholeheartedly. God, I can't do any of this myself. God, anything I bring You, it's not going to be my best. It's just that I'm going to try to bring You my whatever. God, I give You all of myself. I'm not sure it's the best. I'm not sure it's the worst. But God, here I am. I give You complete. Completely over. I give you myself. And when you do that, the Lord's going to start working on you. He's going to start working on you. And you're going to start recognizing the blessings in your life. Some of you look at things and say, Dad, got it? I can't stand that. Why is that happening to me? Just slow down. Just slow down. Slow down and watch because. If you're loving Him and your faith is in the cross, slow down. There's a blessing coming out of it. I tell people all the time, God loves you more than you think He does. I told Brian Rittenberry whenever he went and tried out for American Idol and he blew it. And they sent him packing home. He's a homeboy from up here in Jasper. And golly, he can sing. I mean, he can tear it up. He sings for White Path. He sings for Glory Land Quartet. And everybody was sending their condolences like somebody had died on Facebook. <laughs> oh, we're sorry. We're sorry you didn't make it. Maybe you can try again next time. I sent him a personal message and I said, Brian, listen. 
God has something greater for you than any American idol. He has something greater for you than anything the world could ever offer you. Listen, the Lord loves you more than you think He does because yeah. He's kept you with your family. He left you out of the uh, world. He embraced you and says, keep singing for me, son. That's right. There's no higher call. I'm telling you, if God has called you, you could be President of the United States and you would have to step down. Because there's no higher calling in a person's life than when God calls you. doesn't matter what it is. God's called every single person in this room. Amen. He's called you to something in your life. There's no higher calling. There's no higher purpose. There's no higher thing that you could... No higher dimension in your life that you could ever reach than the one God has called you to. And that's why I say, come by faith. Come by the cross. Go by Calvary and say, Lord, I trust You. Lord, I put my faith in what You did there. I'm not going to bring You my works. I'm not going to bring You what I think is my best. I'm not going to try to earn it. I'm not going to try to, to manipulate You into it. I'm not going to try to bargain You for You. Listen, God don't bargain. It's either His way or no way. It's either all His way or no way. You can't bargain with God. God is not your partner. Right. He's not even your co-pilot. So go home and take that tag off your car. Amen. <laughs> God ain't my co-pilot. Yeah. He's my pilot. Yeah. Because if Bruce flying the plane, that plane is going down. <laughs> and I don't even think God trusts me enough to let me fly on <laughs> Amen? He loves y'all. Stand with me tonight all over this place.